Hey guys, let's get more news about Warriors, but first don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. X warriors GM dishes on who leaked out Draymond Green Jordan Poole video. Former Golden State Warriors general manager Bob Myers had a startling revelation about who leaked the infamous Draymond Green Jordan Poole punching video to TMZ. No, we didn't find out who leaked, Myers said on JJ Reddick's The Old Man and the Three podcast. I think the best I can answer that is, we couldn't pinpoint anybody. It wasn't like we found someone. We looked, we looked. We tried, a third party, but we couldn't. Fresh off winning the 2021-22 NBA championship, the punching incident derailed their title defense. It fractured their chemistry, which led to a second-round exit during last season's playoffs. Golden State coach Steve Kerr admitted the incident took a heavy toll. Anytime some trust is lost, then it makes the process much more difficult, and there was some trust lost, Kerr said during his exit interview after the Los Angeles Lakers eliminated them in May. That's as blunt as I can be. We have to get back to what has made us really successful, which is a really trusting environment and a group that relies on one another and makes each other better. Green thought he was done in the Bay Area following their early playoff exit last season for his role in the infamous video leak. What gave me doubt is that I didn't know if I would have the opportunity to redeem myself, Green told ESPN's own Young Masuk in September. Not, because, that thing necessarily happened. It's that, do you have an opportunity to make it right, or is that just it? It doesn't change what happened. It doesn't change that I was at fault. But I'm a human being, and human beings do wrong. But how do you stand when it goes wrong, when things ain't on your side? When everybody's against you, when the world is saying, oh man, now all of a sudden you're not worth the money you make. Or, you're the cancer and you're the problem for championships later. So the Warriors were forced to pick between Green and Poole, who signed a four-year, $140 million deal in the summer before the punching incident. Poole was traded to the Washington Wizards last summer and has never been the same. The Warriors picked Green and rewarded him with a four-year, $100 million contract. But troubles did not end there for the Warriors. The Warriors are clinging to the tenth spot in the West after Green was suspended twice, first for putting Rudy Gobert in a chokehold and second for striking Joseph Nurkic in the face, this season. Green's subsequent return from his second suspension has propelled the Warriors to get into the play-in picture after their continued struggles during his absence. The Warriors are 24-13 since Green rejoined the lineup on January 15 following a 16-game absence, 12 of them due to suspension. Green showed restraint for most of his return from his second suspension of the season except for one game. He relapsed and got ejected for arguing with officials during the Warriors' 101-93 win on March 27. It just can't happen, Green said on the Draymond Green Show podcast afterward. I said what I said. I deserve to be kicked out at that point. If I'm all the way honest with y'all, kind of was trying to turn my body and angle it to go to the bench, but I said what I said a little too soon before angling my body. But, yeah, it just can't happen. Green averaged 10.2 points, 7.4 rebounds, 5.8 assists, and 2.8 steals in five games since the ejection as the Warriors won 4-5. The Warriors' mercurial forward was a plus 32 during this stretch. Clay reveals biggest priorities as NBA free agency approaches. Clay Thompson and the Warriors didn't agree on a contract extension before the start of the 2023-24 NBA season, and the sharpshooter is set to become a free agent this summer barring an in-season agreement. While Thompson acknowledged that he would like to re-sign with the only NBA team he's ever played for, he joined the Draymond Green show and revealed what is a priority and what will be important to him before making a decision. I just can't believe it's here. When you're in your mid-twenties, it's so crazy, you think you're going to play forever, Thompson said. And you think if you maintain that athletic level, it seems effortless. 
but then as time goes on, you realize how demanding this job really is. It's so physically demanding. I was actually struggling a lot with that at the beginning of this year because of the unknown. I might have let contract situations or playing time or making up a lot of excuses rather than just appreciating what is in front of me. It took me and, Warriors coach, Steve, Kerr, like four real, heart-to-heart -heart talks to finally break my shell. Being like you know what? I got to have fun this year. I deserve to have fun. We worked so hard to win these games and play into June, have fans on the road. My first couple of years, there might have been a few Steph Curry jerseys in the crowd. Now it's like a whole contingent of Warriors fans on the road. I was kind of grappling with that this year, it's almost like your own mortality as an athlete like, damn I might not be able to elevate like I once did or I might not slide my feet left to right like I once did, but I can still be a heck of a player if I just give gratitude and keep that perspective like I'm out here balling. That was hard for me these last few years. When you go through injuries, you're so used to playing at a certain level, guarding a certain guy, shooting certain shots. Then you have to adjust all of that. That was the hardest part of my career. And it's still hard for me when I'm used to scoring 25 in a quarter, locking up the best player. Now I got to pick my spots a little more precisely, which is fine. I've finally come to understand I can be a heck of a player, I can still be incredibly efficient. The Warriors guard has gone through ups and downs since working his way back to the court following two serious back-to-back -back injuries. As fierce as a competitor as he is, Thompson has admitted that he was chasing accolades and trying to force his way back to his former, pre-injured self. But after several conversations with Kerr and those close to him, he's beginning to realize what actually is important to him. As long as I'm having fun and being a good teammate, and you actually helped me a ton when you told me, lean into these young guys, lean into the fact that you're a vet, you've made X amount of money, you don't have to worry about anything. You're playing for the love of the game. And I think once I realized that and I relaxed a little bit, rather than playing for a contract or all-star nod or some accolade, but rather just play for the love of the game. The fact that I get to play cards with guys on the plane, we were playing ping-pong last night after the game, we're having fun. That's the beauty of the game right there not trying to get another max deal or another endorsement. Just smelling the roses and appreciating all the work it took to get here. In saying that, when it comes to free agency in July, I just got to keep that in mind. Yes, I want to re-sign with the dubs, but I also have to prioritize my mental health and lay out what is important to me at this point in my career. I know we have so much basketball ahead that I haven't given it much thought. Because if I start thinking about July 1st, then I'm just doing myself a disservice. For me, it's just about staying present, as simple as that is. Staying present and appreciating being in the NBA. For now, Thompson and the Warriors are focused on making a deep playoff run. Kyrie Irving speaks profoundly of Steph Curry after Mavs beat Warriors. Kyrie Irving gave Stephen Curry his flowers after the Dallas Mavericks fended off the shorthanded Golden State Warriors 108-106 on Friday, April 5, on P.J. Washington's heroics. He set the bar for a lot of us point guards of where we want to be, Irving told reporters of Curry after the win. We're still chasing his legacy. Curry hit a game-tying jumper, with 13 seconds left to cap a 14-point fourth-quarter explosion. The Mavericks answered with a Washington basket in the final four seconds. Irving made the hockey assist when the Warriors immediately sent a double team on him off the inbound. Tim Hardaway Jr. attacked the basket and found an open Washington from the other side, who used the glass for the game-winning layup. The Mavericks mirrored the Warriors' defense in the final play, quickly sending a double team on Curry off the inbound. Curry quickly made the potential hockey assist to Chris Paul, who passed it to Clay Thompson in the corner. Unfortunately, Thompson's three-pointer at the buzzer was short. The Mavericks snapped the Warriors' six-game winning streak without Luka Donich. 
Washington picked up the scoring slack with 32 points, while Irving added 26 with 8 rebounds, 7 assists, 2 steals and 1 block. Curry led the Warriors, who played without Andrew Wiggins and Jonathan Kaminga, with 28 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists and 1 steal. It is not a one-on-one -on -one battle between me and Steph as much as fans make it and I don't know how long that conversation can probably continue until he retires or I retire, Irving said of their marquee matchup. And you, fan, what do you think of the situation of Kyrie Irving? Leave your opinion in the comments.